Hi, welcome to Steve's Wood Cave. Um, this week we're going to uh, do a cove and a bead um, in a spindle turning again. So you can see there's there's like a scallop here, that's a cove, there's another one here. And then a bead is the opposite to the cove where it goes over like that. Um, this is a piece of sycamore, I'm going to use a similar piece of sycamore, slightly bigger diameter. But um, yeah, uh, that's what we're going to do this time. Um, Keep watching, thank you. Okay, so here we are with our uh, pre roughed out piece of sycamore. Um, I'm just going to draw some lines on it to indicate where we're going to start and stop the cove. Um, I didn't show you close up earlier but that's basically a cove you can see it going around like that and this is a bead going around the other way so like I said I'm just going to mark some lines on here for guidance this uh, 3 8 spindle gouge, it's about 10 millimeters, and before I cut it I'll just explain. So with the cove uh, we've got these two lines marked here, we want the middle midpoint to be uh, the, the thinner, thinnest diameter. To start the spindle, uh, sorry, to start the, um, the cove we need to start in the middle and start scalloping out the cove but eventually we want to get over right onto our side the bevel needs to be almost uh, running straight across this pencil line from the left and we, we twist and we rotate the handle and we end up like that in the middle and that means that we're cutting downhill from the right hand side the tool is on its side with the flute facing straight across the, the, the axis of the piece of wood. The bevel is pretty much in line with the pencil line. And again, over on its side, start the cut, twisting and rotating the handle around like that. So just to show you on the pre-cut one, we would start on the side here. And you can see the bevel's rubbing. As I twist it, and come around like that from this side bevel rubbing twisting it around like that let's see how we do One thing I forgot to do, we can um, cut some through the pencil lines just so that it, we don't get any skids. And to do that, I would use a uh, find it. Where's it gone? Right. To do that, I would use the skew chisel, which has a, a toe end, which is the, the furthest forward point, and the heel end, which is the furthest back point. So we use the heel, tool on the rest, in line with the pencil mark and then just go in like that. Nothing more than that. We don't want the, the rest of the blade of this um, skew to go in, only the this bottom corner. I'll show you what I mean now.
There you go, it's just created two little um, cuts in the wood and that will help when we get round to the final cut the bevel, it, it stops the tool from spilling out over, over the side and in this direction it will stop us going to the left Here you can see the cove's now cut. Um, it's quite a wide one, but anyway, it's just for demonstration purposes. So you can see uh, it may need a little bit of tidying up with some sandpaper, um, but other than that, it's not too bad. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to put a bead in this section here, but in order to do that, we need to um, just use the spindle gouge to, to go in like this to form a, a slight V on either side.
Okay, so now we've got two V cuts here either side, so now we can form a, a bead here. To form the bead, uh, it's the opposite, obviously the opposite to, to the cove. We start in the center and we twist, and as we twist, we rotate the handle round until the tool is in there. We need to be careful that the, uh, the wings of the spindle gouge do not touch any of these adjacent parts. And the same going to the left, start in the center and just gently roll it around into the middle here. Um, and as we come around, we need to lift the hand on and have the point in that V groove. Not too bad. So here you can see the bead. Um, yeah, there's a few marks in the beads there, but basically that's all you need to do. So it's just a question of following the bevel round. You're starting here at the centre with the bevel rubbing. You're lifting the handle to, to start the cut, and then as you swing it around like this, you also twist it into there. And consequently the same the other way. So you've got the bevel rubbing all the time as it's following the, the curve that you're trying to achieve. And it's the same with the um, cove on the right hand side, bevel rubbing, twisting as we come into this shapely corner and ending up with the flute upright in the centre. Same from the other side, it's all right over, flute pointing towards the, the, the centre axis of, of the spindle. You can see the bevel's rubbing here, and as I twist it around like this, and swing it around, I end up with the tool over here. But my camera tripod is in the way, so the tool would end up sort of here. And the bevel's still rubbing at this point. So that's the general idea. Anyway, um, I hope you learnt something from that and um, there's lots of other ways of, of adding details to this kind of spindle and you can use the parting tool, skew chisel, 
um, they all require slightly different methods you can use the beading tool as well for for cutting coves and is it here so you don't have to use the spindle gouge you can use this uh, beading tool which is like a square parting tool and again bevel rubbing using just one of the points so if we're doing the right hand side we're using this right hand point and bringing it round until the bottom point of the beading tool is in that, that crease same going to the left, we use the left hand point this time and into there also notice that um, I'm using this uh, cone drive here in the uh, headstock end and as I said in one of my previous videos if there's any tool biting going on if I make a mistake I catch the tool in, in the piece of wood then this will just stop maybe I should demonstrate that okay so just to demonstrate the, uh, the safety factor so when you're learning to turn having a, a live revolving centre in the tailstock is the first thing you need and the second thing you need in the headstock is the cone drive and as I explained in my previous video if I get a dig in in the wood with a tool I do something silly which is what you're likely to do when you're learning to turn then um, the thing's just going to stop when you're learning to use this tool in particular um, I totally advise you to to use this cone drive rather than a prong drive or a chuck. So let's just demonstrate that. Try and go uphill, it's probably not going to like it much. There you go. Dig in. Notice the uh, motor's still running. There you go, the wood will stop and nothing will come to harm. So that's the best way, cone drive, live centre, <coughs> practice your cuts um, and then everything should be fine. Okay, <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, I uh, hope you learned something about coves and beads and um, hopefully you'll be able to uh, at least try it and, uh, and you can end up making all sorts of strange chair legs and table legs um, anyway thanks for watching um, if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe that would be really awesome and um, hopefully I'll bring more videos uh, as time allows alright thanks very much have a good day